Glad to know you're still there. If it's just joining us, this is News Hub and we're showing live on Silver Television, Silver News 24. Yes, we'll be delving right straight into the next segment, which is the newspaper uh, review. We'll be taking a look at what we have on the front page of the papers. And this time around, someone decided to show up live in the studio, probably the last show winner of the year, Chris Kende Nwandu. Um, let me get that correctly because I know we don't call him. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, uh, chartered mediator and conciliator. It's nice to see you live and direct. Nice to see you, dear. In How your, are you? Is he immaculate white? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Compliments <laughs> of the season, my Yes, people. long time no see, like we've seen nice. our local palace. Yes, it's nice to see you guys. All right, let's talk national matters. Let's take a look at what we have on the front page of uh, this time around. We'll start with the Daily Independent. Remember, at some point, the phone lines will be open for you to call in. Uh, and when you do, please yes. turn down the volume. If I totally just kill the volume on any of the devices you're listening with, and make your comments as precise as possible so others can get to call in too. So let's begin with the Daily Independence. That's the first paper we're taking a look at today, the Daily Independence, the big story. Okay, uh, let me start with the one above the, below the picture of the day. It says, mandatory direct primary, too costly for Nigerians. Finally, uh, we get something from the presidency. I guess their feet has been put to fire, and so they are beginning to insist and explain the decision that they made. A mandatory direct primary, too costly for Nigerians. That's coming from the presidency. Let's go above the picture of today. A patronage of POS dips as customers return uh, to ATM others. Let's see, there's a strip just above the picture of the day showing people having fun um, during the holiday season. World Bank cautions Nigeria against hiking electricity tariffs. You can find more of that on page three. Let's go beside the picture of the day. Uh, Clark calls out Lai Mohammed, asks him to build bridges. Says Jonathan flushed out Boko Haram from 14 Bruno local government areas, not Buhari. Wow. Okay, you get more of that story on page six of the Daily Independent. Uh, moving on, uh, there's something uh, FCTA, that's the Federal Capital Territory Administration, to revoke titles of 435 abandoned buildings. So moving on from that, attack on PDP Congress in Zamfara. Assault on democracy comes with its rider, which you might want to take a look at. 2023 presidency, Southeast leaders endorse IM. Okay, let's just go quickly above the masthead where um, Obasanjo, um, uh, whose clap back is second to none, is replying, um, Clark, he says, you're suffering loss of memory. Uh, that is from Obasanjo to Clark, of course, Edwin Clark. Let us see what we have else, else, else. Let's go. Beside that, 2023 elections, Governor Masari reaffirms support for power shift to south that and more you can find on the front page of the daily independent all right and then we go on to the leadership newspaper it's the last day of the year that the president will sign the 2022 budget 10 a.m at the time if you got the invitation for that you can go there uh, to the presidential villa where he'll sign the 2022 budget into law uh, leadership has got the pictures of uh, the southeast the people who are eyeing the 2023 presidency a number of them you'll also find in nigeria's next ceo with silver bed. I see Rochester Sokorocha here. I see uh, Oji Uzo, Kalu, Umahi. And just to mention a few, Peter will be, you know, have a look at all of those pictures and see whether indeed it's what, uh, whether they're worth the salt. A federal capital territory author, author, administration, rather, saying they're going to revoke titles of about 1,035 abandoned buildings and plots, saying that they become hideouts for criminals in the south, in, in the north, rather in the federal capital territory, and saying they will not fold their hands and uh, allow those buildings to remain uninhabited and abandoned. You can find these stories and much more in the leadership. From the leadership, let's take a look at, <coughs> beg your pardon, what we have on the front page of the Nigerian News Direct. The Nigerian News Direct uh, story, a big story, National Development Plan, Federal Government 6, 348.1 trillion Naira to create 21 million jobs in five years, uh, the rider quickly to lift 35 million out of poverty. Mm. Okay, let's quickly go above the masthead. Obaseki is ilo to inaugurate. Uh, okay, let's move on from that. Oil belongs to Nigeria, not Niger Delta. Obasanjo counters Clark. Uh, let's go below the pictures that we have here. Uh, um, security. Uh, 
Exchange Commission wants Nigeria against putting money in Fin Africa Puyoyo investment. For those of you who are very good at doing Ponzi scheme, beware, they've warned you. Sustained tempo of operations against all criminal elements. Uh, Chief of Army Staff charges troop uh, that we can take on the front page of the Nigerian News Direct. Uh, let's go on to this Nigeria. This Nigeria has got a number of stories here. Just beside the banner here, this one says that COVID-19. Jam exams on the age from its no vaccine, no entry directive. It's a good one. And then if you go to the bottom of the, of the, of the page where you have the picture of um, Chief E.K. Clark and Olusegun uh, Obasanjo, former president, you have um, you will be a let residents on detonation of unexploded explosives. <laughs> I don't know how they put those words together, but they're simply saying they're going to be carrying out a controlled demolition, de detonation of explosives in Damatu, uh, close to um, uh, the, the Meiduguri Road. So people shouldn't be scared because uh, when they hear those things go off, uh, know that um, it is the military behind it. You get the stories and much more in this Nigeria. All right, we can take uh, another paper. This time around, it's this day. This day, the big story is on the Obasanjo and Clark Basbus. So uh, you can get more of that when you pick the front, uh, the, this new newspaper. Let's move on from that. Uh, above the masthead, Bayosa spill, abrupt wellhead leak, impossible without interference, experts insist. Then there's a report that says over $10 billion stolen as crypto scams rise to 80% in 2021. We're going to take a, a deep look at that when we take in uh, the tech review session. Let's go uh, below the picture of the day. Uh, let's say an external interference caused it. I really can't see what it would there, but you can find more when you pick uh, a copy. Uh, the bottom strip, Auditor General of the Federation uncovers 48.4 billion Naira extra budgetary spending by Agric Ministry. Really interesting. Let's, let's stop there on the front page of this day newspaper. All right, Sikian. Um, interesting stories we have on all the front pages, but maybe it's what, what is not being said, which, which leaves you a bit um, um, flustered sometimes. The National Service on Recess, they told us when they come back from recess, they will have the opportunity to look at the Electoral Act Amendment Bill. But it appears that every single day that passes, uh, you're getting words from the executive, which seems to suggest that that bill may never see the light of the day. Uh, it appears that they are on sin hands, uh, making it look as if um, it goes beyond the direct and indirect primary to want to truncate the entire document. I don't know whether you see this on sin hands, uh, you know. I'm not a CEO, so I'm not in any hands. <laughs> so, you, might have, you may have better eyes than I do. <laughs> it's possible that, uh, that you have a third eye, which is not visible to <laughs> some of us or even messy here. Uh, but uh, on a more serious note, uh, I think it's just uh, it's quite unfortunate that um, we're trying to throw away the baby with the bad water. Mm. And um, it's quite unfortunate, in fact, because knowing uh, that uh, this is a bill that we've been talking about for years, and um, it is also quite unfortunate that almost this is the third time that the president has refused to uh, append his signature to the electoral bill. And he promised Nigerians that um, one of the legacies that he's going to leave behind mm -hmm. as the president of Nigeria is give, equity Nigeria with uh, uh, an electoral act or electoral law that will make it very, very impossible for us to see all the shenanigans that we see on a yearly basis when we go into election and the rest of them. Mm. And um, Nigerians are supposed to hold him to his words. And I want to believe that the president is a man of honor and he should be able to do that, uh, that for Nigerians. Uh, but standing on the, behind the issue of uh, direct primaries and uh, not trying to throw away the uh, bill or send it back to the um, legislature as it were, to me doesn't sound good. If you have any problem with the uh, electoral act, all you need to do is sign it and send your recommendations or areas where you think that the National Assembly should look at um, back to the national, especially in the areas of direct primaries. We did that with the PIB. Okay, the PIB was there, or PIA, whichever one we call it now. Mm. It was uh, within the national police for years. And but at the end of the day, the president signed it and now sent areas where he felt that there should be necessary amendments and rest adjustment to the National Assembly, which I know they are debating or they are still debating. Right. But the fact is that so much depends on that uh, electoral law, or bill, or whichever you call uh, because we are looking at electronic transmission of results, which is very key. We are looking at uh, the use of beaver, which is very key, and so many aspects of the. And then itself is going to, it's like, what you are doing is trying to tie the hands of our neck to the back. 
as it were now. And we just have barely less than 15 months or they are about to go into the next uh, general election and we are still dealing. But it's quite unfortunate also that this morning we are seeing um, news coming in that INEC or whoever said that about um, how many, three, how many now? 301 LGS cannot be, uh, don't have uh, yeah, good internet uh, facilities absolutely. for electronic transmission. But this is the same INEC that told the um, National Assembly during the debate or even after the debate and they said that yes, we can fully transmit. Um, so I don't know, there seems to be, is, uh, is it the voice of Jacob and hand of his hand as we, Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you understand what I'm saying. But we shouldn't. The National Assembly should do the needful once they uh, reconvey in January. Um, 13th or there about let them look at that is the most important law for when us. When you said do the need for you mean they should veto the president? It is within their power to do that. It is within their power to do that. You can, if you sample the opinion of several Nigerians, several Nigerians have, have um, uh, support what the National Assembly is doing on the, for once, for once. And you can take it to anywhere, for once. It seems to be Nigerians and National Assembly against the executive. And when you talk of executive, there are just few executives, uh, they're just the governors. Yeah. It's the governors that are pushing the president to the, the, the election that brought the president into power in 2050 was direct through the high primaries by the APC then. Mm -hmm. That was how he got to the, the, if not for that, I can I continue to say it. The president didn't even have the money to buy the form in 2015. You remember he said he went to some people, gave him 10 million or whatever and the rest of them. If it was going to be one-on-one, um, <laughs> uh, -on -one indirect, uh, people like Aitiku, Akwansu and the rest of them, they had more money than uh, uh, Buhari mm -hmm. and they would have flooded him. Okay, but because he also has some backers here and the people, people like Tinubu and the rest of them, they went into direct primaries and everybody, practically everybody believed in Buhari and that was how they voted for him. So it shouldn't just be, he, he, he shouldn't be somebody that gained for direct primaries and not because of the fact that some governor felt that the power has been taken off them, oh no, that we're not going to, but for me, he's neither here nor there. The electoral bill, the electoral law, whatever you call it, is not only about the uh, primary. There are so many other things in the way that need to. So we need to get our house together so that INEC will start preparing for 2023 election. Before you know it, 2022, there will be no governance, there will be no governance in 2022. I, you can be rest assured of that. All the political governors, the politicians, and the rest of them, they will be going around um, campaigning and the rest of them. You see them moving around the rest of them. Governors, four years. They used two years for governors. They used two years for campaign. And that is what happened in Nigeria. What a pity situation. But we just hope it gets better, that's all. So let's look at the case of two big daddies fighting over natural resources. Mm -hmm. Or who, what belongs to what, and I guess I don't know if the child this time around will come and say, Daddy, stop fighting, Daddy, stop fighting, mm. without being trampled upon, mm. as is the case of the former president of Nigeria, former president of Obasanjo and um, um, Chief uh, Clark. Daddy O and Daddy C. <laughs> <laughs> daddy cool. Yeah, Daddy cool. <laughs> uh, but uh, let us look at it from this point. Um, I personally will cite uh, Obi this who asked me why. Uh, constitutionally, OBJ is talking from the point of constitution. And constitutionally, what he's saying is absolutely right. Whether you like it or not, the power to, to supervise or to pretend on anything that has to do with resources in Nigeria belongs to the federal government. The 1999 constitution, as amended, mm -hmm. is very, very explicit on that. So whether you oil is in uh, is Niger Delta, whether mm -hmm. it's in uh, Zamfara, whether it's whatever, whatever, whatever it belongs to the federal, that is what the, the constitution. Then if you also look at the land use act, as it were, the powers over land belongs to the governors. Mm. That is what the land use act says. So when you, jump at that, uh, you look at both, you come to realize that the federal government, the, the uh, yes, uh, Chief Clark may be right in his assertions that, oh, the oil uh, belongs to Nigeria Delta people. Mm. But let me also tell uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Clark, uh, Chief Clark, that I, I, I'm not from Nigeria Delta, but my state also produces oil. In my state, we have oil. Oguta, we have so much oil, yeah. and we don't belong to Nigeria Delta. So, when he's saying Nigeria Delta owns all the oil, I don't think he's right. There are some states that don't belong to Nigeria Delta, and those states is an oil producing state as well. Right. Abia is an oil producing state. But we should look at it. There are two things, two, two ways to read. The fact is that I agree with him to some extent that yes, people that owns those oil or whatever mineral resources within the other state have the right mm. to be able to derive 
whatever benefit that comes from it, and that is what we're talking about constitution. Before you can do that, we have to go back to what we, what we use, our constitution. And that is why some of what I've been saying, that the way the constitution is now, is not making it possible for even states to be able to generate income within themselves. We still believe that we need to go back to what we had pre um, independence, what we had, the First Republic and the rest of the where the, the various regions had the power yeah. to be able to um, harness whatever resources they have and not pay something to center. The way right. it is now, presently, is not going. But constitutionally, General, uh, general yes, yeah. General Lucia Gobas, and Joe I will tell you, is absolutely right on that. You can look at it from me, it may hit yeah. the messenger, but that does not necessarily mean that message is delivering it wrong. And when you say about Sanjo, hates um, Niger Delta, I don't understand what it means. It was a person that wrote the constitution. In fact, 1990 constitution, 1999 constitution was handed over to a person by the military. He wasn't part of those that, came, um, that brought okay. about that constitution. So I think it's more of a personal clash of that the O and that the C, which I believe they can resolve within themselves. But I don't think this is where to go, uh, moving to 2022. Right, to all the statesmen. I, I'm, I'm sure that Ike Clark never sees this too. Um, uh, 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 never ceases to amuse us uh, with his comments and mm -hmm. entertain us oftentimes about um, issues of national uh, importance. We're going to open the phone lines now, which means that when you call in, uh, the numbers will be at the bottom of the screen. Please kindly go to a quiet place so that when you call, uh, we don't have disruptions uh, to the conversation. You have at least a minute to make your comments, inquiries, or questions known uh, to us. So, see here we have. Um, discussions on the papers about the Federal Capital ter uh, Territory Administration. Interestingly, many of them are viewers of this station too. And um, over a thousand bills, they say, they get their title deeds revoked because um, the FCTA believes that those buildings are being used as hideouts for criminals. We haven't seen the evidence support that yet, but um, I don't know what you think about whether they can follow through on this sort of... Um, they've labeled these buildings abandoned, and uninhabited buildings. And I, my, in the years I've been to Abuja, I'm always amazed that some, I mean, I've seen buildings that have been there for over Structures. two, three decades that nobody has ever stayed. Um, buildings worth uh, billions of naira. but I will come to you, seek care of this one, after we speak with Ololade. Uh, Ololade, please uh, go ahead. Great to have you join us. Uh, look, we've lost, lost the connection. But please do try call back, and we hope we can hear what you have to say. In, in the course of my earlier discussion, I, I told you the um, law as a affairs, the, um, the land use act. Yeah. And I told you that the, the state, the governor, has the right over land within his territory. And by extension, like you're talking to the FCT now, the FCT minister have a uh, right over yeah. land. So they have the, he has the right to revoke. In fact, where you have, even with your CFO, you are given just about 99 years by the government to own that. Mm. So at any given point in time, it could be acquired for public good with compensation as the con constitutions and the rest of them. But if we have a situation where we have abandoned, uh, abandoned buildings and the rest of them, into, I have seen that too on my own. Several places, we go to Mentama, go to Asokoro, we will say to uh, zones. Name them, so many of the places. Sometimes you ask yourself, even within uh, the uh, uh, beggar area, you see a lot of FCC. You, you see, yes, you listen, listen through you the do airport, airport, the airport you on your see left your, on your right. You, yes, exactly. And this has been like so, decades. If, yeah. So if and the, um, some of the reason given uh, is germane, because it also happened in Lagos. If you move around Lagos, where we are, I see most of these abandoned buildings in the night. I see the number of people that stay around those areas. Those are people you cannot capture instead of security. Right. And you see them perpetrating all sorts of um, evils and the rest of them. So right. they've been given um, time to be able to get those buildings up and running and right. get them completed. If they're not completed, then it will be revoked. And I right. totally yeah. agree with the uh, FCT right. um, administration yeah. on that. Yeah. Give people they want houses to stay. Let them stay in there. They're yes. paying a, a thousand naira. It's yeah. better than living in yeah, there. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Let's speak with Ada. Ada is calling in from Plateau State. Uh, please go ahead, Ada. Oh, sorry. I hear Elder Zion. Elder Zion, please go ahead. Oh, good morning, everyone. Good morning. Please, I want to make a little contribution to what you people are discussing there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, about uh, about St. John and the class uh, dialogue. You see, we cannot say that about St. John hated uh, the people of Niger State. When about St. John was the military head of state, and he, he brought in so many Niger death people. To his government. 
when he was the civilian government president from 1989 to 2007, many Niger staff politicians participated in the government, and he gave them what really belongs to them. Like what we are seeing here in Buhari, the region. But that, that, that's not the case, what I want to say. What I want to say in NS, we will continue to complain of marginalization. In a deep way, if the government or all what you have, if we cannot refer to this country, the mistake of 1940 should be corrected. We, the way we are going doesn't look as we are one. Let us go back to where we started. Let us convey a meeting of all ethnic groups. I want the important question that should be asked before we continue. All right, Please. Elder Zion. Are we ready to be one Nigeria? All right, Elder Zion. Important question, I guess, for you, for everyone to answer whether we're indeed one Nigeria. Professor Una, thank you for joining us. Uh, Please good go morning. ahead. Good morning, gentlemen of the press. Now, the, the fight between uh, Batanko and Flack. There's an issue that has not been addressed at the Flack Day. Yes, so Batanko was right by saying they all belong to the state. But the issue of gold, does it belong to the state government? We are here, all of us know, when a state government, Zanfara in particular, sold gold to CGM. And that money was not given to federal government. So what are we talking about? Now, uh, uh, this issue should be addressed fairly. But what are just draw the wire? So let's contextualize this issue. Yes, they only belong to the government, the federal government. The gold, the solid mineral, they only belong to the federal government. So what, one state should not be treated uh, uh, with uh, cheap goods. And another one, uh, the government should just uh, play, play in plan, or play in politics for it. I think that the issue is of my own from my own point of view. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Anna, for your contribution there. Um, Chris, you want to, you know, c yes, comment um, on the calls? Yes, and... sorry, 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 before, you, before you go ahead quickly, let's stick with Ada. Oh, yes, Ada. Uh, um, Ada, please go ahead quickly. Hello. Yeah, we, we can hear you now. Go on, Ada. Yes, okay. Good morning. Ada, calling from just my two states. Hmm. Anyway, about uh, the one Nigeria issue. For me, if we want to remain as one Nigeria, not just on paper, we have to go back to peaceful federal meetings. That is the refactoring we are running away from. Then, when it comes to the direct primary issue, that is about the electoral and uh, amendment bill. I feel the National Assembly, if they want to prove me otherwise, that that particular issue, that is the direct primary, if they are very heavy, they wanted to divert attention in order to truncate the whole exercise. There are, if if uh, the, 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 the media reports I've been following is anything to go by, there are about 18 other electoral reforms inside that uh, um, electoral act uh, amendment team. So let, let, let them expunge. This uh, direct the primary thing, which they have put there as a red heading, let me report me their curious and send it back to Mr. President to assess to immediately. And then Mr. President, on his own part, please and please, I'm begging you through this media, I'm appealing to you, Mr. President, you said you want to leave a legacy. Don't stand up with them and refuse to uh, uh, sign that particular uh, it, it won't do you a uh, it, it, it won't do any good. It, it is going to scale on your integrity. We hold you in our we feel you are a man of the Please and please don't forget it. I'm just appealing to you. Right, I don't know how the national assembly wants to start the new year on a wrong footing. I they're not asking by any other end or whatever, 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 whatever. I don't know. I don't know. All right. Uh, looks like we have a joining now again. Ololade, please go ahead. Um, uh -huh. from Karasu. I want to commend the Office of the Auditor General of the Federation for the discovery of that huge sum of money. It is unfortunate that most of the services that people are crying for and that the ministry is expected to be carried out was not done. So I will call on them to 
Bring their satellite on our agency. Thank you. So, we show that your kids have come to life. So, I will leave them to do more of that. Thank you very much. I'm not going to have this. Alright, it's a lot of reactions, huh? <coughs> Sticky end. Yeah. Um, <coughs> As I was saying before, I agree with um, Professor Izinia no, uh, yeah. No. Yeah, and uh, others that called. And as I said, it's that whether it's the good in Zamfara, whether it's the um, iron or whatever you call it that is in Jaws, mm. or the one you find in Kogi State, or even the good that you find in Leisha, Leisha or whatever in Osho State, mm. everything belongs to the federal government. It does not belong to any state. People have been referring to the good that was uh, uh, found in Zafara that some, uh, a governor took to the president in Nassau Rock and the rest of them to present. And the state have no right to, um, to do that. But the federal government, don't also federal government give licenses to um, companies for mining. <coughs> so if, a, a, if the federal government gives um, a license to a company to mine good in uh, was it in Zamfara? Right. And it comes out with that. The question you now ask yourself: Does it belong to the company? Does it? Be, so it depends on the kind of arrangement you have. But that does not remove the fact that the federal government has power over anything, any mineral resources. Found. Even in my look in my village in Umugobo, we need more state. If they find under my father's um, um, uh, uh, father's um, old house that he built in the 70s, right. if the federal government find oil under that building today and the federal government want to take it, they will acquire that. The best they can do is to give me compensation as the son to that man. But that the federal government will not take it, they will, because the constitution has given them that right. It's for public good, and there's nothing I can do about it. Mm. But the fact that they are taking it, I must be adequately compensated. That is what the, um, the cost. But that they will not. So I, going back to that, Zafra State does not have a right over its good, whether I like it or not. Um, Plato says does not have a right over the, and that is why you see most often than not, you see the government, federal government, to, okay, stop all mining. It's also please. They've done it several times. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm sure you, you are aware that right. there is a ministry that has been created to take charge of that. That is in charge of that. What I've been asking myself is that why is it that we are just concentrating on just oil, 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 oil? Good when we question. have all, so many other uh, resources across the There are some countries that live just barely on gold. So live barely on diamond. Mm. So no, live yes. barely on so many other. You understand what I'm? And that is enough for them to export. A no. country like Dubai has no oil. Most, but you see how developed they are. So the first remedy, why we are fighting over this oil, oil is because we don't have alternative to resources. If we have alternative to resources, everybody cannot just on a daily basis just carry there. And that is why people like us have always been praying. I have always been saying, yeah, people will continue to laugh. I want that oil to dry up one day. <laughs> Let that oil just dry up. It's true. Because uh, what's supposed to be a blessing to us has practically become a cause. And that is the basis for so many conflicts in Nigeria now. And it's a bane of mismanagement. It's, and yes, it's been mismanaged. Yes, Chris, but we need to move on from that. Um, as we have all the papers to read before you know, the segment uh, runs out, let's take a look at what we have on the front page of The Punch. Quickly, The Punch newspaper. Uh, the big story here is on the 2023 uh, election. It's an electronic uh, transmission of results. Doubtful as 301 local governments lack internet facilities. Uh, you can take a look at the writers to get details of the story. Of course, the picture of the day shows um, Nigerians uh, having fun during the holidays at different parks. Let us go uh, quickly below the pictures uh, here. Uh, just at the middle, Ayade Mons uh, as ex Senate President, why as widow dies in the UK. Okay, child visit, ex-wife <coughs> accuses Femi uh, Coyote of shunning court order. Okay, moving on from that. Uh, man, two wives, son, others heading for christening, drown in Niger. Such a beautiful story there, disheartening. Something here is here from Emo State. Emo kicks as a Korocha son-in-law tackles Uzodima faults. Arrest. So let's go. Uh, Neatcom, father fought autopsy. Lawyers plan ECOWAS suit. Okay, let's go above the masthead. 
This could suffer a load reduction as power generation sheds 571.5 megawatts. It's really a tricky thing, right, as they keep transferring blame from one, one party to the other. But let's move on. Uh, federal government set to close 2020 marginal oil field bid round. Okay, moving on. 15,049 Nigerian nurses moved to UK in five years. Well, they're seeking greener pastures. Uh, beside the masthead, let us see, let us see. Auditor General queries ministry's uh, 3.8 billion naira spending from suspended Ruga fund. Mm. Interesting, uh, to, uh, what's it called, subjects we have on the front page of the Punch newspaper. And then on to the Daily Sun, uh, Buhari inherited 500 billion US dollars economy from Jonathan says, next minister accuses a major of lying, misleading Nigerians and money left behind by former president. We go to the side uh, of the banner here, Ohaneze meets next month in 2023 presidency. They've started, they've slotted, and let's see whether they'll get any way out of it. They said open discussions with political parties and regional groups. Then one more story before we go. This one, uh, by Elsa Spill, interference cause of wellhead leak, says experts. And um, you can get these stories and much more in the Daily Sun. Okay, let's move on from the Daily Sun and see what we have on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. The big story is that prepare for another pandemic. COVID-19 won't be the last. UN is warning this time around. Okay, uh, move on from that. Let's see what we have at the bottom of the page. In fact, the picture of the day is something else. I mean, you can see waste and people moving around, um, selling stuff, picking passengers in front of, you know, amidst all this waste. This is not good. It's an eyesore, actually. Okay, let's see uh, what we have at the bottom. Concern mounts over closure of streets in Lagos. Beware, Lagos Airport's car park unsafe for travelers' vehicles. How vaccine cards are procured without jabs. Is this still going on? Uh, that question will bring us to the end of what we have on the front page of the Guardian newspaper. And then we run quickly to the nation. Uh, big story of the nation um, looking at uh, what is going on with the oil and gas industry. But let's go above the banner. These are stories we haven't seen yet. Former president of Gambia, uh, Yaya Jame, is found guilty of, in the murder of nine Nigerians and several others. The, the commission set up there has um, indicted him. And let's see whether they can bring him from the Kuchero Games Human Face Trial for the atrocities that happened during his tenure in Gambia. COVID-19, the World Health Organization is beating rather says that uh, the global vaccination target of 40% cannot be met and it puts uh, into reverse gear uh, a lot of plants in dealing and taking COVID out by next year. You get the stories and much more in the nation. And quickly on the front page of Daily Trust newspaper, Daily Trust, uh, the big story here is on the Niger Delta um, issue uh, and the back and forth between a passenger and clerk. Let's move on from that. Okay, below the picture of the day, electoral bill components not good for Nigeria. And that is coming from uh, the presidency. Uh, let us see what we have above the big story of the day, just below the masthead. There's a story on health that we should take a good look at. Lassa fever death toll hits 92. Uh, okay, and that's what we can take on the front page of the Daily Trust. All right, Sikian, um, uh, uh, there's, there's a story on the Daily Trust that talks about Master the Governor of Casino State, state saying that power should, be go, should go to the south. Many of the, go, many of the power blocks in the north are unanimous in saying that the presidency should go to the south in 2023. Uh, I think the Daily Sun has got a story about uh, Ohanes is saying that um, they are going to begin talks about how uh, the presidency will come to the southeast in 2023. I don't know what you've heard, uh, what you think about... Um, yeah. Um, <clears throat> Uh, there's no gain saying that um, there is enough agitation that power should shift to the south. Um, the north um, has gotten its lot through President Muhammad Buhari mm. since 2015 um, to 2023. And uh, there's always been this, it's not in the constitution, but there's been this gentleman agreement um, between the leaders of the north and the south, as well as uh, within the political parties that. Um, we should be rotating um, the presidency. Also, we know that, um, that some people have reneged on some of these things, uh, but um, serious agitation is on that um, the South 
is a, a position to produce the uh, presidency in 2023. And the question now asks, which part of the South? Are you talking of South South? Are you talking of South East or South West? That is where the issue is now. And it's left for the political parties to now be able to pick their presidential candidate as the political uh, atmosphere is opened up um, come next year. And um, but um, it's not just Governor Masari. I know that um, Governor Erufai has also said something of that in, in the past, mm -hmm. and some other uh, governors of the north. So uh, it is now for the South to be able to put his ass together. But you cannot become the president of Nigeria if you don't have the support of other parts of the country. Mm -hmm. The South cannot go it alone. So it has to be with the support of the North, just as the North couldn't go it alone without the support of the... Now, so many gladiators will be hearing a lot of names, uh, and you continue to hear names until the D-Day, when the political parties will now have their convention and select their candidates. As per Ohanez and Dibu, well, they said they will meet in January and uh, start chatting a court. They not, they've not said which direction. Personally, I am the school of thought that an organization like Ohanez and Dibu should not endorse anybody. Every Igbo, if it's going to be coming to the southeast, Ohanez and Dibu, just like Afeni Ferry, or uh, what Arewa, whatever you name it, supposed to comprise of every person from different political parties. It's like a, 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 it's like a king. And I see some, some of the things that our kings do here, or bars or oases or whatever, and I continue to laugh when some people will come and another will come and say, I endorse this yeah. person. But you, but you, you think Ohanez is being pressured because people have accused him in the past of not being, of, of, you know, of not being direct or decisive in their actions. They just have made blank statements about what they need to do. No, at times, you just have to be able to, um, uh, if you have three children, and you just say you want to elect a prefect in the house. <laughs> as, a father, <laughs> as a father, you'll be seen to be fair to all the three children. Okay? Right. Probably mommy may decide to say, oh, this is my pet bright child. But as a father, you cannot be say, oh, no, it's you, it's you. And you, you bring a kind of bad blood among the So what Hanese has been doing is trying to play the politics as it were. And as I said, even within Ohanese, we have APC members. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have PDP members. You have APGA members. I'm sure you're aware of that. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Ohanese cannot just wake up and say, I'm endorsing this PDP candidate. And that in itself becomes a problem. What they do, if you do, is to be able to call your please, this have been, which uh, have been sent to us. It is our turn. Can you people just meet and make sure that whoever emerge, whoever emerges within this city, make sure that each and every one of you support that person. And that is the way to go. But um, I've been hearing some, a, a lot of names. But we, we rest assured that before that period, most of these names will fall by the wayside. Mm. There's always a dark cause when it comes to politics. Most often than not, there's always a, Nobody in his widest dream will ever believe that Oshibaju would have become a vice president. I'm sure you're aware of that. In 2015, Oshibaju, of all people, from where now? <laughs> Just a commissioner. <laughs> From nowhere, where you have a lot of people, names and throwing around, remember they are Mechi, they oh, there's so many names. But 24 hours, just before the existed, Tinubu finally said, okay, it's so Oshimbajo. That's our pit. And that was how and many people didn't believe that it would come to. And the country preacher, even Pashola was being told to be a vice, president, a vice presidential candidate. So, if in politics, 24 hours, feel be like one year. And one year, feel be like, just say to me. So, but the fact remains that everybody is on the same page that the presidency should go to the south. And whichever political parties be able to end up putting up a southern uh, candidate may have uh, the full run come 2023. All right, Chris, mm. let's quickly, um, before we run out of the studio, let's quickly get your thoughts on the UN now sounding a trumpet of doom about COVID-19 not being, you know, the last pandemic we're seeing in recent times. It cannot be. We had Ebola now. We had Ebola. Of course. So what happened? After Ebola, we had yellow fever, we have dry fever, we have all sorts of fevers and the rest of them. Of course, Ebola will not be the last. Um, sorry, COVID. Corona. COVID would. In yeah. fact, COVID, we now have COVID Pro because with the Omicron yeah. and the Delta or whatever variants that you said, that is an a Pro over and above what we're used to. So definitely, will be. There will always be pandemic. Um, there will always be issues around health across the globe on a yearly basis. And it, that is why agencies like the um, WHO was established by the United Nations 
because they knew that something of such will happen, just like you have for UNICEF and the rest of them. Right. What we ought to be doing in this part of the world also being be proactive and to make sure that we are in a position to whatever comes in, we're ready to attach it, attack it, not waiting for Western nations to help us out. And that is where Africa is always getting it wrong. We are, that is where we've always had issue. Mm -hmm. We had COVID, we're not ready for it. We are begging for, uh, begging for vaccine all over the world like uh, beggars and the rest of the, even the one that they gave up, we couldn't even use it. We destroyed over one million. Mm -hmm. So the challenge for us is that it's not a one, it's something that will come, definitely it will come. But how ready are we as Nigerians and Africa to, to be able to withstand whatever is coming, the next one that is coming? And Niger Africa is always on the receiving end. You know why? Because the Western world will always rally around within themselves and be able to find a solution to it. Mm -hmm. We won't. We will definitely not be able to find a solution to it. And they would have finished treating their people before they even remember us. And that is where they, the prediction on COVID didn't happen in Africa. You remember that some said that, oh, right. the streets of uh, the Africa and Nigeria will be littered with cops. And, uh, now only God save us. So God said no. God, know that God cannot give us what is above us. And he knows what he, he can give us that we can handle. Poverty, bad leaders. and You know all those types? He will not give us that. And we continue to believe him. Is that <laughs> is savage. No, no, no. It's a fact. It's a fact. May uh, God help us. Yes, and I agree absolutely. We need to ramp up our healthcare mm -hmm. system in a way that public health uh, crisis like COVID, when it happens, will be better prepared. Thank you very much. Uh, we, uh, Charles Kendo one, Chris Chris, Kendo one, yes. CK, your fifty, your fifty combo, combo is it's not working. He's always well prepared for us. Tata Conciliator and Mediator. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for having, having for one last New Year. Year. Absolutely, on the last Wednesday yeah. of the year yeah. twenty twenty-one, exactly. yeah. it is like the people who go to church, yeah, or the mosque, yes, at the beginning of the year, yeah. And then we don't see them again till the end of the year. You know, you always see me. They say, you know, you always see me. Yeah, they say because God is very busy. Yeah. They want to be very kind to him. Yeah. And just show up, you know. Anywhere you are, you can worship others. God. Uh -huh. yes. So they show up at the beginning of the year, yeah. the end of the year. Yes. And then the remainder part. You just have that sharp, sharp, sharp. <laughs> I, think, I think we have a name for them now. They call them online members. Online members, of course. COVID is not even helping matters at all. <laughs> it's not being here. Mm. All right. Thank you very much. Uh, we hope we can see CK again at uh, the, the start of the new year. Uh, we can talk some more, chat the course uh, for this country uh, to be at a better place. We've got a quick break. We come back. Uh, we'll have a look at uh, the news update. And after the news update, we'll have a review of the security situation in this country. Please stay with us on News Hub.